I am not the type of person who reads a lot of news and makes a fearful impression out of headlines. In fact, I am the exact opposite. My worry comes from watching the recent stock market gains that are not matching the current rise of COVID cases. Don't you also get this feeling that the stock market behaves like it's all behind us? Like we are on the way to recovery. This type of gains makes me wonder what others think about stock market crash. And I found this. Nobel winner, economist says that the stock market crash risk is very high at this moment. This guy is a legit expert on the stock market. Hi guys, this is Money Mike and in today's video, I want to talk about the chances that we are going to see the second market crash. It is worth mentioning that the market crash topic is sensational. Anyone posting an article or video on the stock market crash gets rewarded and YouTube is no exception. I want you to be extra cautious and that doesn't exclude my content. So always make sure that you're paying attention to the reasons in the content and not just the title. Watch this video till the end because I think this might be the last opportunity to get out of the stocks that are going to be punished by this pandemic and prepare yourself to buy stocks at the discount. Now back to our Nobel winner economist Robert Schiller. In times like this you don't want to rely with your opinions on self-proclaimed experts. When I feel that there is something wrong with the stock market I want to hear what experts are saying. Robert Schiller is one of them. Robert Schiller was rewarded with a Nobel Prize for work on the stock market. I think we have to take his opinion seriously when we see all the other indicators that are on the stock market that are predicting market crash. I am right now more persuaded than any time before that we are going to see a significant decline in the stock market in upcoming months. You know, and I, <laughs> I was one of the optimistic people in March who made a lot of money on people who were too pessimistic about the future. I was the one who took all the savings and put it in the stock market because I thought people are overreacting. So trust me when I say I am one of those optimistic. Initially, I thought that there is a big chance that the whole COVID situation is going to be over in June or July. But this is not what we are seeing. The market behaves like this issue is already solved. So right now I am the one who is actually being worried. And some of these stocks that I thought that they're going to recover, I, I, I just don't think they will. And here is why. The problem is in the psychology of the current market. Human nature and psychology make people overreact to short term threats. The fear, however, has a quick progression. It is a defensive mechanism built in the human nature that is preventing the further damage. But on the other side, people tend to be more optimistic in the long term. Optimism has a long progression as fear fades away. Human brains start to ignore and tolerate the issues in front of us. I believe this is where we are today. We overcame the period of overaction and, and now, the market correct itself. We are too optimistic, maybe even ignorant to the current facts. We are coming to the point where I'm thinking, how are these stocks so high? It's just crazy. Here are three signs why it is crazy. The sign number one, the increased number of new investors that are involved in the stock market right now. This graph is showing how many people were searching for information about stock market over the past 24 months. We see a 134% increase in the search in March compared to the previous period. If you look at the graph of search phrases by beginner investors, you will see that 200% increase. This means that there are many new investors. I would only assume even more people entered the market with the easy to use apps like Robinhood and Webull. What we should question, are these people going to stay or are they going to pull back their money? If the stock market will result in 20 to 40% gains, then if we see a threat of lockdowns in the USA, do you think these new investors are here to stay if they are going to be threatened with the loss of their gains? I don't think so. 
and this might cause a money outflow from the stock market and it could be a beginning of domino effect. The sign number two, lockdowns in Europe are the warning to the United States. The outbreak of pandemic in Europe started about one month earlier compared to the USA. We can only assume that the United States stayed behind the Europe progression. We see more and more lockdowns in Europe, so the only conclusion is that the USA is actually next. This is what Dr. Scott Gottlieb has to say about that. At the beginning of the steep part of the epidemic the curve, we've seen these uh, episodes before. Right. Um, and you'll see cases start to accelerate in the coming weeks. I think the inflection point really is going to be Thanksgiving. December is probably going to be the toughest month. We'll see cases accelerate into Thanksgiving. I think we'll be forced to take tougher mitigation steps right around Thanksgiving. And people will start to reduce their activity. Um, we'll see states implement targeted mitigation. That'll be probably the turning point. Right now, today, we reported 97,000 cases. Uh, oh. We probably will cross 100,000, maybe tomorrow but certainly by next week. So this is beginning to accelerate around the country. And the reason why it doesn't feel very bad in most parts of the country right now is because it's moderately bad everywhere, as opposed to the epidemics before that were centered in New York or in the South. Right. This one is more confluent across the entire country. Well, if it's moderately bad everywhere and the trend is up, then are we anticipating really bad everywhere? I think that's the risk. We there is a chance that lockdowns are inevitable for America. Sign number three, no one is paying attention to COVID right now. Pandemic right now was in the shade of election. If I'm saying no one, I'm talking specifically and primarily about the media. Media shifted their attention while we are in front of probably the biggest outbreak of COVID. People will simply lose their feeling of urgency of this problem. I almost feel like people are kind of glad to forget about this for a bit. This Google trend proves that people care less about the number of cases, even given the numbers have never been higher. People just don't care about COVID that much anymore. So what do we do now? Sh should I buy stocks? Should I sell or should I stay all in cash? Here's what I decided to do. The first step is to subscribe to my channel. I'm obviously. <laughs> my second step was to get rid of all the pandemic stocks, get rid of the uncertainty. The beauty of the stock market is you don't, you don't actually have to buy everything. There are many stocks that are not affected by the pandemic. Use the benefit of that you can choose which company you are going to be invested. My third step is to protect the money. In fact, I do not plan to be in defensive mode. I will do the exact opposite. I actually want to be aggressive at this time. The way to do that is definitely not sell all your stocks. With that, I am on the same page with the big funds and investors. Trying to time the market could lead to a missed opportunity and I'm I'm here for the ride when the Fed will print money. So the question is how to get ready for that. This is what I have been doing for the last few months. I started to sell stocks that I previously bought with the optimism we might get easily through this. As it turns out, we won. It started with selling Delta Airlines stock, followed by selling Coca-Cola stock. And then I've sold most of my dividend stock, which at that time was about half of my portfolio. Basically any stock that is questionably going to be static in upcoming months and potentially actually years. To make it clear, I don't think that you would lose money with those stocks one year forward, but I also don't think that they will bring you 20% annual gains, which is my personal target for the stock market. And this is how I want to get to 1 million from $28,000, which is the goal of this channel. The fourth step is to hold companies that you are ready to hold for the next five years or even 10 years. This is not probably something surprising and I hope that many of you actually already follow this rule while investing. But at this time, I am stressing this rule even more. Buy only companies you are ready to stay invested in the long term. I believe if any stock will fall, the decline could be amplified by the market declining and that would lead to even higher losses. And this is the reason why you should buy only long-term stocks. The fifth is to hold cash. I am not really that big of a fan of holding cash because if you have cash, they don't 
you know they don't generate any value because if you hold cash they don't generate any value at the same time they allow you to take advantage of a good opportunity the problem is that if there is not an opportunity then your money basically did nothing but at this point where i think the market is headed i do believe that there are going to be new opportunities for buying new stuff this is actually where i don't mind keeping some cash because i believe that we are going to see some new opportunities on the stock market i'm not heavy on cash probably the most of the cash i hold at any point is probably about 30 to 40 percent and right now i am holding about 30 percent of cash most of my money is in the stock market how to wrap this up i would not recommend you to panic in fact most of the time when i sold my stocks i was able to wait for a good price obviously i'm not selling any tech stocks but i'm not buying them either if you look at the s p 500 I think anytime the stock market reaches all time high might be a good opportunity to sell stocks that you are not 100% believe in. If you look at S&P 500, I think anytime the stock market reaches all time high, it is a good opportunity to sell stocks that you don't believe in 100%. And if you look at this support level in this graph, this is actually, in my opinion, where the market should be maybe even lower that tells something about where i start to consider buying some stocks again anytime the market reaches the new all-time high it is a red flag for me to question all my stocks positions anytime the market declines under the recent support level i feel comfortable with healthy market corrections and in this case we are less likely to see the market crash. That's it for today. See you guys next time.